Summer is fast on the way, and it often means longer days and higher travel prices. More Americans are traveling between the months of May and August than any other time of the year. So travel expert Chris McGinnis is joining us today, and he has some insider travel tips to share with us today. Thank you for joining us. Sure thing, Kristen. Thanks for having me. So off the bat, you know, we know a lot of people travel. What's the biggest tip that you can offer people booking their summer vacations right now? Try to use timing to your advantage. If you can jump, if you can drop everything right now and take a last minute trip, you'll probably find some pretty good deals for June travel. The period you want to avoid if you're trying to get a good deal is the peak of the peak summer travel season, which starts next Friday, June 21st, and goes all the way through August 10th. That's when the, the travel industry is making hay while the sun shines and it's going to be very expensive. The next time you can find some good deals is later in the summer. Uh, late August and early September is, are, is, is a good time to find some deals. As a matter of fact, Southwest Airlines uh, just kicked off a sale this week uh, with, with a lot of really good fares that uh, their airlines have matched. So you can fly for $100 round trip from San Diego up to San Francisco, San Jose, or even Lake Tahoe if you want to if you want to beat the heat a little bit and get ahead to the mountains. Okay, what about overseas travel? Is now a good time to do that? And how do you know if it's worth it to pay you know, a little bit higher price during the summertime? Yeah, well, overseas travel is going to be expensive this year. There's a lot of pent-up demand for travel to Europe. So people are paying quite a lot just to get across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. From the West Coast, you're probably going to pay a minimum of $1,500 and probably closer to $2,000 just to get to Europe. If you want to save money when you're there, I would suggest avoiding the most popular uh, destinations like London, Paris, and Rome, and instead heading east to countries like Turkey, which despite the protests is still a great place for a, va a, a bargain vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, Hungary, Poland, the east uh, in Europe is where you're going to save the most money. Okay. Also, be sure you use the right credit card when you go overseas. I use the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card because it doesn't charge foreign transaction fees. Oh, that's nice. That's very good. So, uh, okay, if you're staying in the U.S., how do you decide whether to fly or to drive, you know, to pile everyone in the car and, and take a road trip? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, a lot of people, especially families, are turning to the road trip this year because they're tired of all the new fees that the airlines are charging. They're tired of the hassles of air travel and the worry of having to make a last-minute change to a non-refundable ticket that's going to cost an arm and a leg this year. So they're hitting the road. And, uh, you know, the good news on that front is that gasoline prices are actually coming down. So uh, the, 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 the nationwide average is not expected to exceed 360. I know we pay a lot more than that in California. But nonetheless, overall gas prices are coming down uh, compared to this time last year. So it may make more sense to hit the road instead of flying this summer, especially if you're a, a group traveling together. Okay, and then if you do decide to fly, how do we avoid some of those fees? And, and how do you decide if it's worth it to pay more for the extra leg room and things like boarding early, luxuries like that? Right, right. Well, I, you know, you, I think it's important to look at the difference between these new fees that the airlines are charging and these new products and services that they're offering. So the fees that I think are the most irritating are the change fee, for example, which just uh, went up from $150 to $200 to make a change to a non-refundable ticket. If you're a family of four and you've got to make a last-minute change to a ticket, that's going to cost $800. Another egregious fee is, you know, that having to pay uh, airlines to check your bags. Most airlines now charge $25 for the first bag, $35 for the second bag. So that's at least an extra $50 uh, right off the bat. So you can avoid that by flying airlines like Southwest or JetBlue that don't charge uh, for the first check bag. Okay, and what about those blackout dates? You know, unfortunately, they, they have the blackout dates a, a um, during a lot of popular travel days, so uh, how do we avoid those right. days? Right, that's always when, always when you, always when you want to go is when they, when they're blacked out. Right. So what's going on with the airline frequent flyer programs now is there's all these miles out there now. Everybody's earning frequent flyer miles for everything, and in order to control their inventory, the airlines are imposing blackout dates or they're raising the the number of miles that you have to redeem to astronomical levels where it doesn't even make sense to do the redemption. So what I do is put all my charges on the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card, which is part of Chase Ultimate Rewards. And what happens there is that when you redeem those points, the bank actually buys you an airline ticket. So if there is a seat available on a flight, you're going to get that seat with no blackout dates. So it's a good idea to look at the credit card programs like that. 
Okay, great. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Great travel tips and uh, happy vacationing to you. Thank you so much. Okay, same to you.